out of some circumstances. He took us out of some situations. We need to look to him because he is the answer. The minute you think you can do it on your own, guess what? You're on your own. You need God in your life. Everyone needs God. So let's look to him. God, I look to you. I won't be
could not hold you grace and mercy woke me up today, that I've got mercy, that I've got grace. because we love you not because we're guilted into it but we love you and we want to spend our time with you and Father we want to give you the first of everything so this is the first of the week of my whole week is Sunday and I've given it to you Father I thank you Lord I'm going to open up our heart so that the word of God can come in so that I can be changed so that I can be, become a doer of the word and not just a hearer only Lord thank you, Lord, that you are good, and you only do good, and that there's good going on around me. And I believe, Lord, the longer I stay in, in tune with you and the longer that I speak the word of God, Lord, the things that I see and the things that I say, Father, will come to pass. And I will see the thing that I'm praying for. Father, I will see the things that I'm believing for. Father, we love you, and we thank you, Lord, for the great things that you have done. Jesus, then we pray. Come on, say amen. Come on, say amen. Give him praise. Amen. 
But like we always do, find around, get around somebody, get around somebody, and give them a God bless you. Sing it out. Amen. All right. Isn't God good? Isn't he good? He's a great God. Hey, I want to welcome everyone here today to True Life Fellowship. You're here for the first time. We welcome you. Come on. And those of you watching by, by live stream, we welcome those also. You're not just peeping in, but you're also a part of us. And so we welcome all of our, our live stream. Uh, you got a lot of people that look on live stream. I mean, you can go on your phone. You can go on your computer. A lot, we've had some of our, our members too, they can't make it, they're sick or they're somewhere else or they're out of town, they're just popping right on in. They know how to get, get a hold of us and watch our, our, our uh, sermon and what's going on. I want to point you to the, to, the, um, to the bulletin real quick. We've got Chick Night. Can you say Chick yeah. Night? Chick Night. Ladies, join the Chick Night Friday, November 22nd. My wife's been going around getting y'all some, some of these uh, nice uh, invitations. Uh, 7 p.m. for an evening of fellowship fun, laughter. You know there'll be chocolate there, of course, probably, or there'll be something there. And so uh, Pastor Roy will be sharing her heart, talking about living a life of freedom. Uh, please RSVP so then get an idea on how many people will be going. They're gonna, it's going to be at Crystal Barker's house. And so email Crystal or give her a call. Let her know. Guys, Turkey Bowl. Come on, Turkey Bowl. That's going to be November the 23rd at 8 a.m., flag football at Bear Creek Park. And if they kick us out of there, we'll make the directions from there. We'll find out what they're going to do. They almost kicked us out of that first one. so. But it's going to be a great time. Of course, it's flag football. I put it there, flag football, okay, flag football. Uh, also, life groups will be starting uh, December 13th. It's going to be at Crystal and Jeremy's house. So we're just kind of giving an idea on who, how many of you all are interested and seeing who wants to be a part of a life group. Uh, right now, they're, they're called life group. Who knows what we're going to call them next, but it's going to be their life group. And if you're interested in that, uh, it'll be uh, get a hold of, of Jeremy or Crystal, and they will have all the information needed, and it's going to be a great time. If you've ever been a part of a life group, I'm pretty sure many of us have been part of life groups. If you haven't, it's a great time of fellowship, and it's not going to be that long. It's probably about an hour or so. It's not that long, and just uh, it's, it's a great time of fellowship. It's a great time of being together. Also, all our veterans, if you're a veteran today, would you stand? Would you, all our veterans, if you're a veteran, amen. Come on, we give you honor. Yes, we give you honor. So tomorrow's Veterans Day, and so we want to make sure that you honor the vets. I really appreciate when I went, we were out of town. We are at our men's conference, and I'm going to have the guys come up real quick and share. Uh, we are at the men's conference, and we went to go eat out, and they, they had on there, all veterans eat all day long on Monday, you know, on Monday, something something we were looking at, and it was like on Monday. I mean, a lot of the restaurants had it, not just one, but many of them, and that is just awesome that they do that, just to recognize them. And so if you see a vet, I mean, you see them, and you know he's a vet, I tell you that, tell them thank you, because the reason why they gave their life, so that we can have church, so we can have this freedom, amen? There's a cost to be paid for this, uh, for, for having freedom. Uh, with that, I want, the guys, some of the guys went to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we had a time, we went to a men's conference. I tell you what, man, if, if you didn't get a chance to go, uh, hopefully you can go, you can go the next go around. It was awesome. It was, we got, man, I tell you what, the guys that did go, uh, Jeremy stayed out there, and uh, I had, I had uh, Alex, and uh, where is Andy? Andy, where, come on in, Andy. Come on up, Andy. And, uh. I tell you what, the word of God was preached. Yeah, they were talking about real, the raw and the real. I mean, they didn't, it wasn't just fluff and hey guys, this, no, it was about real topics 
about real things that men go through. Share a little bit. What did the conference do? What's one thing that it did? All right. So uh, pardon me if my words aren't together because I'm, I'm pretty tired. You know, we made a 10-hour trip in seven hours. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say who's driving. Um, both ways. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least we knew we were safe, so that was good. Uh, so <laughs> we, yeah, we would know where we'd go. But anyway, um, no, the, the conference was awesome. We got there. Um, there's a lot of eating, a lot of grunting, and other various sounds that I'm not going to explain going to right now. Um, but when we got there, they said, you're going to leave this conference a different man. And, um, you know, I was like, okay, okay, I'm open to that. And, um, you know, how many of us know that, you know, God's not playing hide and seek with us. All we have to do is apply ourselves and look for him and we'll find him. It's not like he's hiding. You know, he's not Carmen San Diego or anything like that. So, um, so that's what we came in with the ex- expectations uh, with that. And, um, and sure enough, when you're just listening and, and, and focusing on him, focusing on him. And that's what the whole conference is about. And then they started speaking. It's like, you know what? You need to focus on your relationships. The biggest thing we took out really was, you know, because everybody's going through struggles right now. And they definitely talked about them, temptation, financial struggles. I mean, real raw stuff like Pastor Mato was saying. Um, but the most important thing they stressed on was focus on your relationship with Jesus, you know, and, and these pastors talking about, like, I don't even pray about my finances. I just focus on my relationship. And my finances and everything else that comes around, it's just a byproduct of my relationship with Jesus. And I was like, whoa, such a simple message that I just totally missed it. So that was something, we, you know, I took away from it. Um, it's just the fellowship with everybody, all the laughs. My cheeks were sore from laughing so hard. It was an awesome time. Guys, next year, plan for this to come out. And, you know, we, we want a bigger crowd for True Life out there. You know, we saw the other churches, all the men, you know, grunting and everything for their church when they named it. So we want to do that next year. So let's uh, let's plan for it. And it was just a uh, life-changing experience. So, Amen. 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 Praise God. Yeah, so if you, if you like to laugh, if you like to eat, and you don't like to sleep, then don't sign up. Because <laughs> it was, uh, man, we laughed the whole time. It was great fellowship. You know, ten, seven, it was supposed to be ten hours in a van. Uh, it was just a blast. It was great to fellowship with my brothers. And then getting there, the atmosphere of the place, to see so many men uh, just on fire for God, searching for God, longing for, for God. You know, just as the deer pants for the brook, for the waters, and our souls should long for God. We saw that throughout that whole place. And it's encouraging. It's encouraging to see that there are other men throughout this country who are coming together to uh, as a call to arms, which is the motto of the men's service, uh, to come together and just seek God. And, and as reiterate what Andy was saying, it's a... Uh, it's a relationship, and uh, what I got of it is, and I was, and I've shared this with a few people in the past as well, is I had gotten into a monotony of, I'm doing so much for God, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but I didn't have God in my equation. I was doing everything for God, but I wasn't doing it with God, and you tend to burn out when you're doing that, and you, you're like, you're in a rut, and I, and I was, I was starting to feel like, I'm like, man, I feel like I'm just going through the motions, and like Andy said, it was such a simple message. They just said, your relationship with God, focus on that. Everything else is a bright product. Everything else will fall into place. And I was focusing on everything else and forgetting God. I'm like, I got to deal with this financial issue. I got to deal with, uh, I got to make sure I pray, read my Bible. I was doing check, 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 going down the list. But what, where was that relationship? You know, and uh, so it was just awesome. It was, ener- I feel energized. Uh, I saw, we saw Todd White, one of the speakers, preach, and he was on fire for God. Nine years, uh, he got saved nine years ago, and he still has that same true first love. And, you know, it's, you, we kind of, he mentioned that, oh, well, they always tell him, don't worry about it, you know, that's how it is at first, and, you know, you'll, don't worry, you know, you know things will taper down, and you'll be just normal Christian. no. You're supposed to be that way. That's And I, I saw him preach, and I'm like, I want that. You know, that's what I want. I want to be on fire for God like that all the time, not just uh, at a conference or just not when first time I get saved. And I, I just came back energized, ready, ready to, uh, to walk in the path of righteousness, you know, what God has called us to do. Amen. Amen. So, so next time they're going to get ready, we're going to do this next year. I think the, the, the conference day is November the 6th. 
And uh, we're going to make another list. And those go, if you say, hey, I couldn't afford it this, this year, start saving this year now for next year's conference. And we want to take as many guys. I tell you what, it's, it's, it's great to go look and you see, you know, hundreds of men just worshiping God, going to the altar automatically. And they're all kneeling down and they're worshiping God. Strong men, every man, all kinds of men were there just worshiping God and giving God the praise and giving God the glory. When you hear and they slow down the music and all you hear is deep men, just deep voices singing their voices to God, it is just awesome to hear that. And I tell you what, that's one thing the enemy doesn't want to hear is a worshiping man, a praying man, because he can't fight against that. Amen? A strong man, when you have strong men in a church, the church is strong. When you have a strong man in the home, the home is strong. Amen. When you have strong husbands, you have a strong home. Amen? Amen. So I want you to make sure you write that down in your calendars, November the 6th. It's going to happen again, men. Write that down and make, and make that time. So let's prepare to give our tithes and our offerings today. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise. They'll have an opportunity. We can. Amen. Go ahead and share it real quick. Yeah. So if anybody needs an offering envelope, just raise your hand. The ushers will get one out to you. We've been talking uh, about understanding tithing. And, uh, you know, this is, tithing is something that was required of the people of God. Um, if you've surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, this is a requirement from God. And uh, it says in Leviticus 27.30 that the tithe, which is 10% of your increase, belongs to God. All, all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. So it is God's and it is holy unto the Lord. Amen. So that tithing is... If we don't give that tithe, the requirement that belongs to God, then we're, we're robbing God. We're stealing from God. And those aren't my words. That's the word of God. It says in Malachi 3.10, which says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. You say, and how have I robbed you? And the Lord responds, in tithes and offerings. You know, it, it's, this is not a feel good, oh, uh, you know, uh, you know what? It's, it's, it's an eye opener to know, hey, this belongs to God. Why, why are we going to take it away from him? You know, if, if there was something here, if there was a bucket of money here we would, for the, that belonged to the church, we wouldn't take that. Just I, I know that 100% people here would not take that because, you know, we're in the house of God. This is the church. You kind of feel, oh, no, I won't, I won't touch that. Well, that's what you're doing with your tithes. Your tithes belong to God. Just and So they belong to him, and they should be paid at God's house. And where is God's house? God's house, we are the house God where we fellowship not that this building is just a building but with us it becomes God's house we are the church amen so Malachi 3 10 says bring the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and that's the Lord's house and, and in 1 Timothy 3 15 reiterates what I just said that the church the thyself in the, the house of God which is the church of the living God the pillar and the ground of truth we are the church of the living God. We are the, the body. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Lord lives in us. Amen. So where we fellowship, that is where the Lord is. So let's be faithful tithers. Let's be obedient to his word. And uh, if we if we have, live a surrendered life, then this isn't a rock being thrown at you. This is a, a blessing that is coming to you. Amen. So let's uh, let's uh, raise our, our offerings to the Lord. And let's close our eyes and let's thank him for for all he's given us. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you give us the opportunity, Father, to praise you not only with our lips, with our hands, but also with the fruit of the labor of, of our work, Father. And we want to honor you and be obedient to your word, Father. You're, you say that obedience is better than sacrifice, and we will be obedient to your word. And we know, Lord, that you have promised us great blessings, and we receive those blessings in the name of Jesus. Amen.
do you want? Mrs. Edwards, I know I ask you this like every week, but would you like to ride to church with me? Oh, come on, Mrs. Edwards, you'll like my church. We have some hot music. It may not be what you're bumping at all, but it's hot. We get down. What do you say, Mrs. Edwards? Oh, I suppose. I've heard it said that 80% of first-time church visitors come because someone personally invited them. All people need to feel loved and wanted, and for some people, it just takes having someone offer to give them a ride to church. We have something great going on at this church. People's lives are being transformed by God's love. Your homework this week is to find at least one person who could use a little more of that love and invite them to come with you next week. Trust me, it's worth the extra effort. Mrs. Edwards, you want to listen to some music on the way? Go ahead, your choice. <sighs> okay, here we are. All right, reach out and invite somebody, all right? Because that's, that's how this church grows. We reach out, and we're going to grow that way. All the kids can go next door, and also the youth. They're going to have a great time. The youth are going to be with David and Melly. I tell you what, we got a great, great, great youth and going to great uh, uh, children's ministry. And I tell you what, that is a blessing to this church. Amen? I tell you what, God is doing good stuff in the kids and in our youth. Because guess what? Those are going to be the next leaders in, in the in our, in our church, and they're going to be the next leaders out there. So the last part of our message, Mind Monsters. If you haven't heard the, the other two other uh, parts of this, get the CDs. They're free. Just sign up out there in the back, and they will get them to you. All our CDs are free. We don't cost anything. The only thing I say is that if you ask for a CD, please grab it and use it, and uh, definitely don't let it see it sliding around in your floorboard, okay? Give it to someone. Give it to someone. Sow it into somebody's life because... I tell you what, uh, uh, that when you sow into somebody, it's going to be a good thing. Uh, let me ask you a question. What is real success? Because success is a, is, a, is a floating object. It's a moving object. Success to one person might be, hey, getting a raise and, and working this. Or and a success to another person might be starting a business. That's successful. Success to somebody else might be something else. It's a moving target. It's really not defined. A lot of times we, we think success is when I have a lot of money. That's when I'm successful. Well, what determined that? Who said that successful people are those who have a lot of money? I've met a lot of people. I've, I've not met too many people, but I've heard and read and seen some other people, and I've met some people, too, that had a lot of money that did not feel successful because their marriage life was crumbling. And you were to ask them, you're a successful person. No, I'm not. I don't feel successful. Why? Well, because my marriage is, is, is a wreck. Well, dude, you got tons of money. That's your, that's your description of what success is. My success would have been something else. It's a moving target. And for us to define, well, if I, if I do this, then I'll be successful. If I do this, then I'll be successful. This world creates our, our, our targets, and really the world shouldn't create our targets. You should determine what God has called you to do and what you feel you're called to do. If somebody can turn down the AC, not turn it down, but bring it up a little bit. It's kind of cold. Want to do that for me, bro? Success is not always financial. Success can also be something that you achieved in your life and something that you want to do. What are you continually speaking about? Let me ask you that question. What are you continually talking about? Or let me turn it the other way. What are you consistently complaining about? What are you consistently complaining about? If you continue to complain about something, then you've made it your idol because that's the very thing you put first. If you put that first and you're always talking about it and you're always complaining about it, then we have successfully made that our idol. And then now we know what we're continually after. That, to me, is success. Whatever you're complaining about, that's what your success idea is. If it's, if it's about money, if it's prestige, if it's position, if it's notoriety, if it's whatever it is, whatever you're talking about, you have now declared that's what the idea I think is successful. If you don't know, ask your wife and she'll tell you, or your spouse, she'll tell you what you complain about. And she'll tell you. He'll tell you. Oh, baby, you complain about that. Don't do it in church. Do it another day, okay? <laughs> 
But I tell you this, what you continually speak will cause you to continually think. And you'll then continually do. So the mind monsters in our life is what you say is what you think. And what you think is what you'll eventually say. Whatever you think, you say, well, I'm not hurting your money by just thinking it. No, you are. You're hurting yourself because whatever a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you're continually thinking on something, you'll eventually say it. And if you say it, then you'll also create it. And once you create it, it's a created thing in your life. We think words don't hurt, but real success takes courage and faith. It has nothing to do with your natural ability. Real success is taking courage and taking steps of faith. Just because you failed at something, at least you took a step. At least you, you might be a wet water walker and you tried it, but at least you out there trying it. And at least to me, I think a person who takes courage and faith into something, whether or not you failed or you succeeded, was a success because everyone else is sitting there back in the back being safe about it. The guy, uh, many of these people that are, have oil companies and stuff like that, they kept on drilling and drilling and drilling and drilling and drilling and drilling until they hit. They don't just drill and they say, guys, forget it. Put the project up. We didn't hit it. Let's move on. They keep on and they keep on and they keep on. And if they hit up dry, then they say, let's take it up and let's go somewhere else and let's drill there. Success, it all determines is the courage and the faith to continue moving forward. Joshua was an example of someone who was, had supernatural success. God was with Joshua. And when God is with you, you cannot, you cannot fail. You might say, well, I, can, I did fail. Yeah, but at least you tried. At least you're trying, you can say. Because the mind monsters in our life say, well, if I do this, I'm going to fail. And if I fail, they're going to call me a failure. I don't want to do it. I don't want to try it. Because if I try, then someone is going to say something. At least you tried. And you're not, you're not all like cement, all mixed up and permanently set. Okay? And a lot of us are like that. We're like, we're like cement. You can't be moved. You're so stuck in your ways. You're so stuck there. You don't want to move and try some things. Even the church, the church at large. Sometimes as a church, we can become so stuck in our, more, in our ways and our things and the things that we do that we don't want to try new things. We don't want to be out there and reach our culture and try some different things to reach our culture. Instead, our culture sometimes looks at the church and the church is out of date, boring. And the church doesn't understand. They don't know what's going on. The church is not relatable to me and what I'm doing. That's why we try our best to be relatable to, our peop to the people we reach. What's the purpose of having a church? The church should be an influence. The, 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 the people of the world should be coming to the church for leadership uh, 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 training. Amen? The, 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 the world should be coming to the church to find out creative ideas of advertising and marketing. That they should be coming to us. Instead, we go to them. Because you know what? We've got the most, we are, we are made in the, in the image of God. We are made by the creative, the creator of creativity. We serve a creative God who, who, who just didn't just create one type of flower. He created many types of flowers. We create, we, we're, we're serving a God and we're, and we're preaching a message that should have the most creative ways of preaching this message. It's the most important message, should have the most important type of creativity. It shouldn't be boring. It should be exciting. It should be something that God has for us. And the mind monsters in our lives say, whatever you say is what you think. Psalms 56, verse 9. If you don't have your Bible, it'll be placed up there. When I cry out to you, then our, my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. Can I tell you this? God is for you. If someone says God is mad at you, he's not mad at you. He's for me. There's nothing that you need to do. There's no more righteous that you can be. You, some people think, well, the more, I can become more righteous the more I do things. The more I go out and I go out and knock on doors and the more I pass out literature and the more I do these things and the more I, I, I pray and the more I do these things and prayer is good, the more I go to church and prayer coming to church is good, but that doesn't determine that God loves you more or less. God loves you the same. Whether you're at the bottom of the barrel, whether you're at the top of the cream of the crop, God says, I love them and them at the same. There's no more difference. There's no, God did that so that no one can say, I'm at here and you're down there. The Bible says that your works will not get you into heaven. You can't pay God off. 
You cannot do the things that you need to think you need to do to get to heaven. The way you get to heaven is just by loving God and, ex and giving your life to him. Give your life to him. Like you heard the guys say, man, we're going to give my, I'm going to give my life to him. A lot of times we say, and they told us this, the guy says, you know what? I, I, we used to say, invite Jesus into my heart. No, I'm going to give him my life. I give you my life. Do whatever you wish, Lord. I give you my life. And it doesn't matter who you are, what you've gone through. What matter is, is that God is with you and he's in you and he's for you. Can I tell you this? It's not God holding back things from you right now. God is not holding things back from you. He's for you. He wants the best for you. A lot of times it's, it's life. These things in life will happen. And you know what? We need to move forward and believe that God will do things. Exodus chapter 3, verse 12. So he said, I will certainly be with you. And this shall be a sign that you and I have sent, that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt and you shall serve God on this mountain. So God's success or formulas for success is based on his ability not your ability. See, if you rely on your ability, you can say all day long, you know, I got to hit this place because it was me who did it. I got here because of me. You know what? It wouldn't, if it wouldn't been for God allowing you to wake up and the grace and mercy for you to go on and on and on, you wouldn't have a chance to do what you did. If it wasn't for God getting you out, it wasn't for God not allowing that, that accident to kind of happen, if it wasn't for God intervening, if it wasn't for God moving in for you, you wouldn't have what you would not have. It's God. So before God can release his power in your life, you have to obey his word. It takes courage to obey God's word in the midst of a worldly ideals and belief. There's three parts that I want to give you. Three parts in this, in this success, this part. I mean, there's probably many parts, but I'm only going to give you three because in every, in every sermon, there's always three, three points, okay? So there's always three. You know, we're just going to go ahead and do that, all right? Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 and 8. Three points, Joshua 1, 5, 8. No man shall be able to stand before you in all the days of your life. As I was with, with Moses, I will be with you. And so you can read that. As, as God was with Moses, so he'll be with, and you put your name in that, in that verse, so he'll be with Mondo, yes. And I will not leave Mondo, nor forsake him. Be strong and be good courage, for to his people you shall, uh, you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I have swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all of the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you to do. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. In other words, keep your mind straight. Don't swerve off. Don't look to the side. Keep looking forward that you may prosper. Say prosper. Prosperity. He's using a word. He's using some type of financial word of increase. Whatever you go, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you will meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to that which was written. And then, come on, say then, as you have to do this to get that. And then, so what has to do? I have to observe to do according to all that is written What in what? In the Bible. And when I do that, this happens, a formula. A plus B equals E. I flunked, okay? I don't know. So it does that. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So the formula is if I do this, keep his word in, my, in the front of my face, if I, if I put him first, if I put all his things first, then these things will happen. Amen? Number one, the first part of the formula is continually speak God's word. Continually speak God's word. If you want success, talk success. If you want, if, if you want to live a great life, talk a great life. If you want to live miserable, then talk miserable. If you want to be depressed, then talk depression. If you want to have a, a horrible home, then, then speak over the home and say negative things over the home. If you want to have those things, as God instructs us to speak the word at all times, even when others accuse you of being spiritually too deep. Because sometimes people can say, oh, you're that name it, blame it, grab it, blab it kind of bunch. And you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know what, and they, and they get after Joel Osteen for being so positive. I'd rather be positive than negative. I'm sorry. I'd rather err on the, on the side of positive than err on the side of negative. At least the man is positive. At least he has a positive outlook in his life. At least he has a positive outlook in the scriptures. At least he has a positive outlook. I'd, I'd rather get around a person who's positive than a person who's always negative. I'd rather read a positive book than read a negative book. So his books are great. 
They give me insight. They give me pot. I need somebody to tell me you're going to make it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to make it. I need that. You need it. Let me ask you the question. Are you t continually saying that, that I'm going to make it? Are you continually saying we're going to make it? Not looking at, your, not looking at your, your checkbook and saying, let me see if I'm going to make it. No, 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 no. Not looking at your, your life or looking at your job and saying, am I going to make it? Am I success? And looking at that and then determining what to say. Anyone can do that. But the Bible says that we don't look, walk by, by what we see. We walk by faith. And like I said before, success is a person who's, who has courage and faith and is able to use their faith. That's someone who's successful. Is someone who's successful is continually speaking great things over their life. They may have obtained it. They may never obtain it. But I tell you what, if they continually speak faith, then they're, they're never error on the side of giving up. They continually pressed and pressed and pressed. Even the Bible says, I press toward. Paul says, I press toward the mark. What's that pushing up against? Resistance. Who's resisting? The world. Things. He says, I press toward the mark. It's like a football person that's coming up and the line is there and they have that steel thing and they're pressing up against it and pushing that thing forward. And the idea is that you continually push and push and move and don't stay stagnant. But know that your success. Deuteronomy 6-7 says this, And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. Say heart. It'll be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them. Talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you raise up. In other words, you raise your kids and you're continually telling them that you can be a success. God's for you, not against you. Honey, you're just continually talking to them and you, you pray with them at night and you say, God is with you. You're a, you, you can do all things through Christ. God is with you. You're a success, honey. And when you get up, you're ready. You can take anything in life. You speak that into your children and you sow that. You shall bind them on the, on the sign of your hand, and they shall be in the front it's between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and in, on your gates. Let me read it out of the Message Bible. The Message Bible is more contemporary. Write these commandments that I have given you today on your hearts. Give, get them on the inside of you, and then get them inside of your children. That's amazing. Talk about them wherever you go. Sitting at home, walking in the streets, talk about them from the time you get up, until the morning and when, the, when you fall into the bed at night. Tie them on your hands and your foreheads as a reminder. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your homes and on the city gates. It takes planning. Can I tell you this? I'm going to be honest with you. There are times when I don't want to read the Bible. Oh, pastor. Oh, the shame of you. Yeah, there's a time when I want to sit down and watch the NFL. There's a time when I just want to chill out. There's a time when I want to go out. There's a time I'm a sinner. And that's true. We're all sinners. The Bible says we've all missed it. There's a time when I don't feel like doing that. Can I tell you this? I love the way Pastor Craig Rochelle said it, talking to all the men. He says, I'm a man first before I ever was a pastor. And so the things that I deal with I deal with as a man also, but I have a calling in my life that's to be a pastor, just like you're, you're, not, you're not Mr. Engineer right now, you're whoever you are. You're not the nurse, you're not Dr. This, you're not per whoever you are right now, you are who you are right now. And right now, I'm, I'm moving in the, in the flow and the anointing of a pastor, but when I get off of this, I'm just normal person me, dealing with the things you deal with too. Amen? Can I be raw with you like that without you not being able to say anything? But you're able to say, you know what? He goes through the same thing. You have to take planning, scheduling, discipline to walk in the word all the time. You have to discipline. How come? I've, I've met people who's like, Pastor, how, pray for me until, so I can have the desire to read the word of God more. Are you kidding me? I can't pray boldness over you because boldness comes with knowledge. People ask, pray boldness over me. I can't pray boldness over you. Boldness comes with knowledge. And the more you know, the more bold you are. Isn't that true? You're bold enough about something because you know something, and that makes you real bold. I mean, all of you were pretty bold today. You just sat down. You didn't test the chair before you sat down. Ain't that right? You just went, you just sat down. Bold. I take, I hope these chairs are good. I'm going to sit down. 
But you're bold. Why? Because you've probably sat here before and you're like, I've sat in many chairs. And a lot of chairs, the chairs I've sat in, they pretty much hold me. So knowledge comes with boldness and you just what? Sit down. Because the knowledge, some of you can't get to my house, but some of you can because how many of you know how to get to my house? You have, you have knowledge. So you have the boldness to say, I can go to his house. I have the, you, you stand up and say that. So the more knowledge comes about something, you become more what? Bold about something. So if you read more about healing, what will end, end up happening? You become bold about healing. If you end up reading more about finances and, and peace and love and, and joy in the Holy Ghost, guess what ends up happening? You get more bold in that area. And so these areas in our life, we need, to, we need a discipline. When you hear yourself speak the word out loud, it enters your heart. Romans 10, 17 says this. So faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. In another verse, it says this. The point is, before you trust, you have to listen. But unless Christ's word is preached, there's nothing to listen to. The words reflect is what's in your heart. The words and thoughts are like a mirror. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Watch this, Luke chapter 6, verse 45. There it is. A good man out of the goodest, good treasure of his heart brings forth good fruit or goodness. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of his heart, the mouth speaks. I like to say this. For out of the abundance of Facebook, it, your heart speaks. I'm going to be raw with you. Out of the heart of Facebook, the heart speaks. What does Facebook ask you all the time? What's on your mind read it what's on your mind and so everyone if I want to know what's on everyone's mind I just got to read your Facebook and I know what's on your mind whether it's nice crude rude humorous non-humorous ethical non-ethical I just got to look at your Facebook Twitter speaks the heart Instagram speaks of your heart Instagram just gives me a picture of what you were thinking. <laughs> gives me a picture. What's on your mind? Out of the abundance of Facebook, it'll speak. There's this thing called, um, <laughs> there's this thing called the browser history. Anybody have a browser history? Many of you delete it. <laughs> The browser history is a list, go to it, it is a list of things that you've been looking at. Things that you've been seeing. Could we print that out and expose that and show it? Could you be able to say, the thing about it is I want you to see it tells you what you've been looking at. How about your TV? If there was such a thing as browser TV listings, eh? And if you go to your TV and it just had a browser of all the places you've been and how long you've been watching them and how things, and it gave you a day, you watched 18 hours of sports this week. Wow. <laughs> Not that it's saying that those are bad, but there's a place in everything where it needs to be. So whatever's going into my heart, whatever I'm sowing, that will I speak. So whatever you're saying, whatever you're listening, it's not who you are in church, because we all acting right in church right now. We're, all of us are acting right. <laughs> We're all saying the right things. We're all doing the right things. We're all having our time. But it's when you're alone, that's who you are. The real character of a person is when you're alone. So think about it right now. When you're alone, who are you? Who, you, who are you? Who's the real you? Not in church, because we all act right in church. We all say the right things in church. We all put on our best, our best outfit, which is our best personality, our best everything. In church, it should be the place where I could be raw and real with someone and say, man, bro, I'm, I'm dealing with this. I am hurting in financial. I am hurting. I need somebody to be accountable, man. I need to reach out to you, man, because there's this person in my work. Man, I, I, can you help me? I don't know what to do. That should be the raw and the real with people. It should be in church because no other place can you do this. You can't even do that at work because you're feeling that somebody's going to take that information and stab you in the back. The one place that we should be raw and real with other people and be able to share with one another is in the church. But somehow it's, it's, the enemy's turned it the other way and we've become more, put a mask in front of everybody and say, no, I'm all right, I'm all right. And they told the men, men, and if you, if you say everything's all right with your marriage, eventually, if it gets to the point, everyone's going to find out your marriage wasn't, wasn't all right. Eventually, it'll come out. The idea is to know that 
I need to speak to God's word. Who are you and what are you saying when no one else is around? Character is who you are when you're alone. That's the real you. That's the real you. I tell this to myself because even myself, I, I think, I mean, who am I really when I'm alone? What are the temptations that happen when I'm alone and what are the temptations that happen when I'm in front of people? That's the real you. Contemporary English says this in Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Good people do good things because of the good in their heart. Bad people do bad things because of the evil in their heart. Your words show what's in your heart. The words. Focus your attention. Cameras have autofocus or manual focus. You have to manually focus your thought and your words in the start. But, uh, but later on, as you were manually doing it, manually doing it, manually doing it, there comes a time in your life when you'll autofocus right away. There's times when you're like, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. Well, you know what? It'll be, it'll be like that for a while. But eventually, it'll be on autofocus. They taught some things. <laughs> they taught some things, and I'm going to say that everybody, the guys know. They were teaching the guys uh, how, how what not to look at. Don't be looking. Don't be looking. And, and I don't know who said it, but they, he says you got you to gotta learn how to bounce. You gotta, there's a lot of eyes bouncing back and forth and back and bouncing forth. You got to learn how to bounce. And at first, he goes, at first, I didn't know when a, a, a woman or somebody's passing me. He was talking to the guys, a woman's passing me. You just keep on looking, keep on looking, keep on looking. He says, you got to learn. At first, it'd be like, oh, I got to stop. Oh, I got to stop. At first, then you'll learn how to bounce automatically. He says, you got to bounce. Your, he had all the men saying, bounce, bounce, bounce. Everybody was bouncing. Bounce, bounce. Everybody was bouncing. You got to bounce your eyes. And at first, he, oh, and it's about bouncing. He says, the guy, I think it was Todd. I think it was Todd who said that. He says, at first, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't bounce. So it took a while for the bounce. <laughs> he would look. At it. And then I think he said, uh, I don't know, what was Andre? It was Andre's butler. It was butler, one of the ministers. He says, it took, took me a while. It took me a while to get, you know, it took other people a while to, to stop the look. And stop. He says, I used to use excuses. He goes, I think I know her. I think I know her. I think. I... <laughs> Something about You know you don't. Oh, I don't know her. No, that's not. I don't know her. I don't know her. He said, you lying. But you know what, guys, and what, everybody? It's going to take a while for you to automatically think it's Sunday. No matter sleet, snow, rain, I'm coming to church. No matter what it is, I'm reading my Bible no matter what. I'm going to pray no matter what. At first, it's going to be like, oh, gosh, I don't know if I can. But eventually, it'll then come to where it's just automatic. Okay? Number two, the second part of the formula is to meditate on God's word. Meditate means to mutter, consider, ponder, rehearse your mind until you see it. Meditation is the practice of training the mind to, in, to, to do things automatically. The message says, don't for, don't, and don't for a minute let this book of Revelation be out of your mind. Ponder, meditate on it day and night, making sure you practice everything in it. Think about the word. You got to think about it. How do you know when a thought has moved from the heart from the head to the heart, because then you act and then you speak. That's when you know a thought has moved from your heart to, from your head to your heart because you say it. How do I know that the, the verse has really made, made an impact? Is when it's moved from here to here. How do you know when you love when you when you love somebody? It's no, no more head knowledge. I don't think I love her. I know I love her, and when I say I know I love her, I'll speak. I'll speak it, and I'll say it. Abraham was fully persuaded about what God had said, so he acted on the word. We all act on the word from friends and others. You got to remember, Adam, uh, Abraham was Abram, and he changed his name from Abram to Abraham. And so Sarah and Abraham is, is the father of many nations. And so she went around saying, 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 father of many nations. Abraham, when she'd get mad at him to throw out the, the, the trash. Abraham, Abraham, father of many nations, father of many nations, father of many nations, father of many nations. Go cut the grass, father of many nations. Go do this, father of many nations, father of many nations. He kept on hearing father of many nations until he finally got convinced he was the father of many nations. Sarai was called Sarah, and Sarah was the, the, the mother of princes. I think that's what it is. And so she kept on hearing, Sarah, 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 because she was barren and could not produce a, a children. And he kept on saying, Sarah, 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 until she finally got to convince that her name was Sarah, and she was able to have many children. And so he got fully convinced, and when you act on the insight that God gives you, it will produce great increase in your life. In other words, you got to hear yourself say, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. God is for me. Who can be against me? The Holy Spirit's job is to make challenges in our life more easier to overcome. Let me tell you this. I moved to the next point. The, God's in your, the, 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 re, the reason why the Holy Spirit's in your life is not to defeat the devil. 
See, we think that we're, we're, we're here to fight the devil. The devil's de defeated. I'm going to tell you this. You're not fighting the devil. You're fighting the thoughts of the devil. The Bible says the, 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 the wily coyote, that's who he is, the wiles of the devil, the thoughts and the strategy. But really, be honest, the, the, the real person who you fight your whole life is you. You fight you. And I love the way Todd says, God delivered me from me. <laughs> I got delivered from me. And he says, and then I got delivered from you. Because I'm no longer in your head. I, he says, I used to be concerned of what other people thought about me, but now God delivered me from me and delivered me from other people and what other people think about me. He says, I don't care. I love you, but I'm going to preach God's word and I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. And whether you like me or not doesn't matter because I've been delivered from you and I've been delivered from me. When you can get you out of other people's head, you can live free. When you can stop thinking, oh, they're going to, man, that, that person thinks I'm this, and that person thinks just because of my past, they, they think of me as this, and you, you got to get you out of their head. You got to get you out of their heads, and you'll be able to live a free life. Are y'all getting me? God's Holy Spirit's job is to make challenges in your life more easier to overcome. But it's usually us who keep us from moving forward. So next time you say, you don't say the devil, the devil, the devil. A lot of it is not the devil. A lot of it is you. Sometimes the church over-spiritualizes things, and it's really you. Change your mind. Wash your mind. Third part, number three, and we're going to close right here. The third part of the formula is to act as though the word you have has been talking about is true, even when circumstances are difficult. The third part is to act as though the word you have been talking about is true, even when the circumstances do not line up. Believe you receive the word when even when you're standing on Mark 11, uh, Mark 11, verse 22. This is the word I tell you what we, we stood on as a, as a student in Bible training. So Jesus answered to him, "I have faith in God. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, whoever says to the mountain, whoever says to the mountain, it doesn't say whoever it doesn't say whoever thinks on the mountain. It says whoever says to the mountain." Be removing, be cast in the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes. And does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says, that he says, that he says, will be done. He will have whatever he thinketh. No, whatever he says. Three times. Says. Whatever you say. Whatever a person says. He will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask. Another, another talking. Whatever you ask. When you pray, believe that you've received them. When do you receive them? The minute you what? The minute you ask, the minute you ask, believe that you've received it. Not, the, not later when you see it. It's the minute you prayed, that's when you received it. So the Bible says the minute you pray, believe that you've received it and that you have them. So you don't pray and say, I hope, I'm, man, I'm praying that God will do this and I hope I see it. No, you have to see it and say, I have it already. Well, I don't have it. I don't have the money right now. I don't have this. Yes, but you've got to believe that you have it already. You've got to continually believe that I am healed. I don't feel the healing. It doesn't matter. You've got to say, based on God's word, I have it. And I'm going to continue to say I have it. And I'm going to continue believing that I have it. It's like I said before, do you want to say that you don't and live a life of negativity? Or would you rather say, I do have it and God is for me and he's going to deliver it, deliver it to me in my hands. At one point, I'll see it. Be ready to act on God's word. The pressure is meant to stop your progressing forward. The stress is meant you to stop. The, 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 the distraction is meant to keep you from moving forward. Distractions in your life. The car broke down. This thing, that's life. And life keeps you from moving forward. We blame God and God has nothing to do about it. We blame God for everything. God, you're not answering me. God, you're not doing this. And it's not God holding back. The Bible says God generally, lovingly wants to give to his children. He's not holding back nothing. The Bible says if he gave me Jesus, what else will he not withhold from me? He's not going to hold nothing from you. He's going to give you everything. There's this thing called life and there's these things that we have to deal with. There's some things that have already been set in motion that we've done our own. Things that we're not going to have to pay the price for or things that we're going to have to deal with and move out of the way. But God says, I've set forth in Jeremiah 29, 11, I've given you a bright future, a future full of hope, a, fu a future full of great things. I have set these up. I have plans for you, plans to give you these things. They're there, but you must walk out these plans. You got to walk it out. You got to walk these things out. Success according to the world standard is a price tag of misery, 
attached to it, but the Bible says that the blessings of the Lord make it one rich and adds no sorrow to it. Because success, they always say, oh, you got to go through hell. You got to go through hell to get that. I had to go through hell to get to where I'm at. And some people say, I didn't have to go through hell. God gave it to me. Ephesians 3, 14, for the reason I bow my knees to the heavenly Father of our Lord Jesus Christ from the whole family of heaven. Ephesians 3, 14, now 15. From the whole family in heaven and the earth is name that he would grant to you according to the riches of his glory be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Now this is a scripture I want you to write down. We're closing with this scripture. Why don't you come up? Uh, look what it says here. Remember this scripture, Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. This is a scripture. Ephesians was re- written to the Christian. It was written for you and I. And so these scriptures can be, ri- can be spoken to and put your name in it. Look what it says here, that he would grant unto me according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in my heart through faith, that, that I might be able to be rooted and grounded in love, that I will be able to comprehend with all the saints what's the width, what's the length, what's the depth, and what's the height, that I will be able to know the love of Christ with past his knowledge, that I will be filled with all fullness of God, not to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly of all that I, all that I ask, or think, and it's according to the power that works within us. To him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus in all generations forever and ever. So it's, see, this thing, that God is willing to do these things. But see, the mind monsters in our life, they hold us back. There's a saying that says this, we are what we, what we repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act, but it's a habit. I want to say that again. We are what we repeatedly do. And excellence is not an act, but it is a habit. So they taught us this in, 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 in a, at men's conference. Todd White was so awesome when he said this. He said the same habit that's keeping you from God can be this. Can, you can create another habit that can keep you to destroy that very thing. If a habit got you away from God, a habit can get you out of it and get you in God. You now got to create a habit of watching what you say, watching what you write, watching what you put on, on on any type of media, social media, whatever you say, whatever you do, whatever you say to other people, you got to watch it. You say, I'm going to watch my words. I'm going to police my words. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to govern my, my speaking and my thinking. And you know what, I mean, if you know, if you know cars, there's this thing called a governor. And it, and, it, and, it, and it keeps things in, in check. And the thing is, that with your life, you've got to have a governor switch in your, in your life. You just don't let take the governor switch out of your mode or your life and just run rapid. You've got to put some boundaries in your life. you got to put some places in your life that you will not go. There's some things that I will not say. And there's some things that I will not think. And there's some things that I will not do. There's some things that I will not read. There's some things that I will not see. And you put these boundaries in your life. Not to say that's bad and not to say that this is good. But he says, I will not go there. I will not go there. I will not go there. And I will not go there. These are the boundaries in my life. Amen? What you say and what you think have a great impact. I want you to stand. As we close and we're going to... God is so good. The Bible says that he is not mad at us. He wants the best for us. If you can dim the lights for me for a little bit. What have you been saying? I've been talking about mind monsters. What have you been saying? Because it's the, these are the things that come at us. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. They come after us. It's what we think. It's what we say. I tell you this. The enemy, the temptation, the temptation is there to do the things that we want to do. The flesh wants to do it. The Bible says that the spirit is weak because... The flesh is strong. Sometimes our spiritual man is weak. I've always learned this. Whatever in a fight, if if there was any kind of fight, whatever fighter you feed the most wins. So whatever that fighter in your life, whether you feed your flesh or you feed your spirit, if I feed my, my spirit more, the spirit man fights stronger. If I feed my flesh man more, my flesh man wins. And so we got to be the people that we control what's coming in here. The mind is a powerful thing. 
A person can before a person a person can already die in here before they've already even died in the spirit and the physical. They've already given up. They've already given up. God didn't call us to be quitters. He called us to be fighters. He called us to be fighters. It doesn't matter where you are in life. It doesn't matter if you're the bottom of the barrel, if you're the highest at the top. Everyone needs God. If you get to a point to where I don't need him, I've got a God. I don't need church. I don't need anything. Eventually, something will come in your life. And you're going to need to reach out to him again. Let's make him center. Come on, let's make him center. We're not going to put God and marriage and label it like a ladder. Let's just make him the center and let everything else revolve around it. Let's just put God right here. And then say, my marriage re revolves around him. I don't, God doesn't revolve around me. And we try to make God revolve around my ideas, God. Revolve around my plans. No, 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 no. God, I'm going to revolve around you. And then my plans will work out. And my marriage will work out. I'm not saying you're never going to have problems. You're never going to have, you're always going to have problems. But with God, you can do all things. Isn't that good? So let's put God right here in the center. And all of our worries and all our struggles will just, will just revolve around him. And the finances, like Andy said, when he was testifying, if I just get my life right and just get my relationship with God, everything else will get in place. Stop worrying about finances. Stop worrying about other things. And just put him first. And it will eventually then work its way out. So close your eyes. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to be serious about God because God is serious about you. If he wasn't, he wouldn't have sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross if he didn't care about this world. He cares about you. He sent you the best. He sent you his son. He didn't send you something else secondary. He sent you the best. You can tell the price of something when you find out what people are willing to buy it for. How much is somebody willing to pay for something? It will tell you the, the price of, the, of that very item the cost and the preciousness of that item. And Jesus, Jesus Christ paid a massive debt that you could not pay. God sent his son to you. And if you're watching my, my live stream and you hear here today, you say, you know what, Pastor, I love God so much, but I feel like I'm far away. Ask him right now. To, to tell him right now. Everybody, everybody, close your eyes. No one looking around. Just share God. Say, God, I give you my life. Say that right now inside of your heart. Those of you watching, say, Lord, I give you my life. Here's my life. Here it is. I give it to you. Do whatever you want to do with it. I give it to you. I give you my life. And with it, everything else that comes with it, all my bad and all my good. All my bad stuff, all my good stuff, all my worldly goods, all the things that I own, I give it to you. It belongs to you. Lord, I know you'll work out everything else in my life. My life is not perfect. He knows that. God, my thinking is, is way off. He knows that too. God, you don't, know, you don't know the kind of person I am. He knows that too. God, you don't know the way I, the way I am. I, 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 I start something and then I can't end it. He knows that too. God, you don't know the things that I've said about you and the times that I've cursed you and used your name in vain and the things that I've said and the, and the jokes and the stuff and the things that I've thought and seen. You don't know what I'm doing now. God says, I know what you're doing now. And still he chooses to bless you. And still he chooses to love you. There's nothing you can do to make God love you more. Because he loves you. So let's move works out of the way and let's just love on him. If you've given your life to the Lord right now and you said, Lord, here's my life. Here it is. All of me. I hold nothing in reserve. There's nothing left. Here it is. God then wants to fill that emptiness now and he wants to fill you with him. And so ask him right now, those of you watching, say, Lord, fill me with you. Fill me with you. Do you not understand that there's no level? God will say, I'll give you as much of me as you want. God wants to give you so much of him, but we're the one who says, stop, 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 stop. I've had enough. God says, I want to give you so much more. There's no limit to my presence. There's no limits. 
Ask him to come into your life. Ask him, Lord, work it out. Work these things out. Control my mouth. Control my speech. Control what I keep, my, what I keep on thinking on. Control those areas of my life. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. Glorious to your name. Let's worship him before we, before we go. If you need prayer, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to come up to the front. And if you want somebody to pray with you, we're going to pray for you. If you want prayer, I'm open to pray with you. But until then, I want you to worship God because it's he's the one. He's the one. He's the one. He's the reason for your success. He's the reason. He's the reason. And he wants to give more of you, of him to you. Let him increase. Come on. Let him increase and let us decrease. Let him increase in your life. And let's ask for forgiveness, Lord. We just thank you. And Father, we ask for forgiveness, Lord, if we put other things first in, your, in our life. We put you first. Let's sing that song. Lord I, Lord, Lord, I just give you my life. I give it to you. Give me wisdom. Lord God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision. Come on, tell that. To see things like you do. God, I, I love to you. Come on, tell the Lord. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. Come on, tell him. You know just what to do. God, I look. God, I look to you. Come on, tell the Lord. I won't be overwhelmed. Come on, tell him. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. I don't know where my help comes from. There it is. Come on. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. You know just what And I will love you. Come on, tell them. I will love you, Lord, my strength. Come on, tell the Lord. I will love you, Lord, my shield. I will love you, Lord, my rock. I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. I will love you. Come on. I will love you, Lord, my shield. Oh, I will love you. I will love you. Lord, my shield, my shield. Come on, tell the Lord. I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, God. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Come on. Come on, he reigns. Hallelujah, our God make this declaration before we leave. Come on. Raise your hand. Just one hand if you can as just an act of surrender. It's it. Just an act of surrender. Somebody were to come up to you and say, stick them up. You would say, hey, hey, I'll put my, you put, put your hands up, right? Say, hey, I, I don't want to, I'm not against, I'm not against you. That's what it means. I am not against you. I'm fully surrendered. That's what it means. I surrender to you. Lord, you see the hands and you see the hearts. And for everyone here, those of you that are watching, you raise up your hand. Lord, you see the surrendering hearts. And they're saying to you, Lord, we give up. I give up trying to make it, to be a right person, to be a good person. I can't be a good person without you. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you've forgiven us of all of our trespasses. As we forgive those who have done things against us. Father, I thank you, Lord, that... You paid a debt that I could not pay on my own. And Lord, I will from this day forward, watch what I say. I will police my own thoughts. 
I'll make sure whatever I write down, whatever I put on social media, whatever I do, it'll be to glorify you. I'll always watch it and see, is this honoring you? Is this being an honorable person? Because the Bible says to think on things that are pure, things that are, things are good, things that are righteous, things that are of good report. And I want to think on things that are good. And I want to I want to send things that are good. And I want to be a person of a good report. Lord, I pray, Lord, that today we make that declaration today. We make that, we solidify it today. That we don't have it all together, but we're, we're moving forward. That you know that I'm going to miss it tomorrow. And you know I'm going to miss it in a, week, in a week from now and two weeks from now and a year from now. You know I'm going to miss it. You know I'm going to hurt you. But even then, you still say you want to bless me. You still want to prosper me. And you still want the best for me. I thank you, Lord, that we live in grace and we live in mercy. Thank you, Lord, that for every day I wake up, every time I wake up from here on out, I'm going to remember it's grace and mercy that's waking me up. That I have the, you, mercy is giving me another day to, to work this thing out. Every morning, I want you to remember now, tomorrow when you wake up, you say, Lord, thank you for giving me another day to work this thing out. Thank you, Lord, that I don't take it for granted life that every day I thank you for grace and mercy. Because I need to sow grace because I need grace. So help me to be gracious to other people and to have patience with other people and to love people not for what they do and what they are, but for who they are. They are made in the image of Christ. Let me be an example to others. Let my words and my thoughts worship you and give you, and give you the honor. Help me to be a good dad. Help me to be a good father. Help me to be a good husband. Help me to be a good wife, another spouse. Help me to be a good friend. Help me to be a good son, a daughter, a father-in-law, a son-in-law, a mother-in-law. Help me to be the best person and see the best in other people. Because whatever a man sows, whatever a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So I thank you today. We leave here knowing that we're right with you, Lord. We thank you, Father, Lord for the forgiveness that you've given us. I thank you, Lord, that today we start with a blank sheet of paper and we're starting all over again. Help us to write the chapters in our heart. Help us to write the things in our heart and our lives, Lord. We love you and we thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you give us. In Jesus' name. Come on, give a God a praise. Come on, he's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Remember, this is not just all encouraging talk, thought, talks, even though it is, it's the actual Word of God. And you will apply God's Word in your life, you're going to start seeing change. But you can't just wait for me. It's got to be you. Amen. Before you leave, greet somebody. Before you leave, shake somebody's hand. Say, God's working great things in your life. Tell somebody God's doing great things in your life. And we will see you Sunday. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh.